Hail humans and take heed. This is the carrier, Shadow of Intent. Clear this sector while we deal with the flood. Get back wounded and regroup. Yes, sir. We attack now! Advance! Curse your parasite! <laughs> Hello and welcome. Today we're taking a look at the Floodgate Firefight set from Mega. We'll take a look at what you get, as well as the pros and cons of using it for stop motion. The set officially retails for $74.99, or roughly £60. But as usual, the prices do vary depending on where you look. And especially for this set, it's difficult to find it for anything less than $100 it seems. Also, this set arrived in an interesting flood-themed cardboard box, which is something I've not seen before. There's so many little infection forms all over the packaging. It's a very nice touch. Firstly, there's a Master Chief figure. His armour has splotches of flood grime all over the chest and shoulder. Other than that, this is a pretty standard Master Chief figure the same features we've come to know. Next, there's two of these articulated flood combat forms. They're based on elite bodies, and they're brand new to this set. Before, we've had less articulated flood elite figures, which were fun at the time. But oh boy are these an improvement. Both the legs and right arm are the typical articulated elite style, but the big changes are to the left arm and main body. This time, the Big Flood Claw has two articulated talons with tiny ball joints. I think it really improves the overall posability of the model. Also, the chest features the removable red soft plastic of the infection feelers, and there's a ball joint on the top to add the Elite's head. Now this is good that it allows you to move the head around, and there's also a hole in the head so that you can add the Elite's helmet if you wanted to but the downside is that the head really sticks out, and maybe the old figure looked better in that sense because the head was more morphed into the body. It just looks a bit odd that it's sticking up so high. Moving on, then there's a flood tank form. It's the same model as we've had before, but the paint job is slightly different. It's got some green and tan splotches on it. There's not a huge amount of articulation, which makes it more difficult to animate but I like how asymmetrical the figure is. The last models are these 10 infection forms. We've had these for a little while now, and they're made from a squishy rubber. The red feelers are pretty bright, and these are the most toy looking models for sure. It's cool though that you can spin the red feelers, because that means you can animate them and make it look like they're moving. The set comes with two grey assault rifles, two black battle rifles, a black shotgun, a grey rocket launcher, two light grey magnums, four frag grenades, a purple plasma rifle, a purple plasma pistol, a flamethrower, a machine gun turret, four tan base plates for the figures, two weapon crates with lids, one long and one square, and there's also a buildable weapon storage crate where you can put all the rifles and grenades. There's some sandbags, a jersey barrier, and finally a brick separator. Mighty Halo Forklift is here! 
The Halo forklift was first introduced in Halo 3 as a bit of background scenery, which makes it very fitting that it's included in this set that's designed around a Halo 3 level. The forklift became a bit of an icon when in Halo Reach it became a drivable vehicle for the first time. Being able to drive it, the fans have tried to use the forklift to get kills or just mess around with it. And yes, it's iconic enough to have a whole Halopedia entry for the forklift if you care to know. For the first time, Mega have faithfully recreated the Halo forklift and the hype has been real. Master Chief, you mind telling me what you're doing in the loading bay? Sir, getting forklift certified. The safety bars can lift up for you to fit a character inside, and there's also handles for a character to grab. The safety bars aren't very resistive, so it doesn't really stay open by itself. The arms can lift up and down, and the forks can also tilt up and down. The arms aren't that strong either, so to keep the Elite lifted up in my intro animation, I had to swap a piece of the forklift for a longer yellow bar, which held up the arm on one side. The wheels do turn, although they're very close to the ground, and sometimes don't turn if you're moving it over studded base plates. Also, the forks themselves are held on by a couple of studs, and are upside down, so anything heavy will cause them to fall off. But all in all, those are all sacrifices for it to look exactly like the forklift from the game, and it does look fantastic and very accurate. Now we move on to the main event, the Traxxas Tower. This whole set was part of a fan vote, where Mega asked the community to vote for which set they'd like to see. Their original concept art was this, called Traxxas Tower, named after the in-game company from Halo 3, Traxxas Heavy Industries, that's a giant manufacturing company. Lots of the cargo containers in the game have Traxxas on their sides, and the floodgate level from Halo 3 which this set is based on is set inside a Traxxas warehouse. It's safe to say that the community almost unanimously voted for this with the promise of new articulated flood combat forms and a giant structure, which is something we've very rarely seen. We got sneak peeks of the development of this set from Mega themselves, and you can see the general structure coming together here. They use random colours from whatever bricks they've got to hand to develop the structure of a set like this, and then produce it in the colours they need when it's ready to launch. And here we are, the finished structure. What I absolutely love about this building is that the three walls are modular and can detach from each other using little clamps. You can change the order of the walls in a few different combinations. It also means if you bought multiples of this set, you mad lads, you can slot them all together and make one long wall or a rectangular building. There's lots of little details if you look closely. Firstly, there's the biggest wall, which has some stairs, a railing, and some numbers printed on the wall. There's also a door that can be opened. In the corner, there's a vent which can be opened, but in the set's default configuration with the gate next to it, one of the vent's doors can't open very far. If we flip the wall around, the back is detailed with some displays built onto the walls. A few crates and barrels are sprinkled around the back as well, along with a jerry can. There's a skull included, which at first I didn't know why it was here, but it actually represents the fog skull, which is found on Floodgate in the game. The second wall is basically a big open gate. This part is the piece that most resembles the previous versions of the Floodgate set. It has a red and green set of lights at the top of it, as well as next to the door. There's also a health pack decal. The third wall is the plainest, just being made of two arches stacked on top of each other. When the three walls are together, you can add the crane gantry on top of them, which is held on with only a few studs, meaning it's fairly easy to take off as well. The crane gantry has a play feature, where the cargo container is hanging by string. You can move the crane side to side on smooth tiles, and you can also wind the string up and down to raise and lower the cargo container. So a couple of things. Firstly, the big positives. The cool parts of the crane are that the claw design looks really good. It solidly grips the container as well. As a toy, it's a great play feature. 
It's also good that the string has two points of contact, meaning the container doesn't spin around too much. If it was just one point of contact, then the cargo container would just keep spinning around. The negatives are only a couple of things really. Winding the winch doesn't work all the time, at least for me. The part that seems to be meant as the handle is too loose, so it turns on its own without turning the winch mechanism. So I either end up having to turn the other long part, which is more difficult, or try and turn the actual mechanism itself, which is slightly sharp for the amount of pressure I have to push on it with. When you do wind the cargo container up, it doesn't rise evenly. It lists to one side because the string is only winding up from one side. It's easily fixed by just holding onto the container while you wind it up or lower it. But it's still slightly annoying because that's kind of the whole point of winding it up from the top, is not having to hold the cargo container. If you're animating with it, it's a massive pain because the container is going to wobble. In my intro animation, I built a little bridge of bricks from the wall to the cargo container so that it would stay still while animating, so I definitely suggest doing something like that. When I look back at the older versions of this set, this newest set definitely has a lot of value for money. Although that does depend if you can get it for retail price, or if it's very expensive. Because as I said at the beginning, it's very hard at the moment to find it for its original price. Hopefully that changes by the time you watch this video. All three sets came with a building, a vehicle, one or two UNSC figures, varying amounts of flood figures, and a bunch of accessories like crates and sandbags. I did like the ghost from the previous version of Floodgate, but having the forklift as the vehicle in this modern version is great, and there's so many other ways to get ghosts, and the forklift is very unique to this set. And I'm so, so happy that Mega have created another set with a building as the main feature. Within the community, I know for a fact that fans are praying for more sets with structures in them, because people want to be able to place buildings on a shelf and populate it with their figures, exactly like this person did. Fans that make mocks would relish the chance to have more buildings so that they can create scenery. Or people like me want the ability to build backgrounds for animations easily, without having to buy lots of third-party bricks. So in that sense, this set is an absolute win, and I love it. The amount of accessories and weapons is great, and the cargo container itself is nice. I remember seeing the Call of Duty sets with the containers like this and wanting to pick one up, and now Halo has one too. I agree with Locomotion that I wish the set came with a human combat form, along with the Elite, rather than the two Elite combat forms that it comes with. The Elites are great, but I'd rather have variety and be able to pick up more later than having to search for the human combat forms separately in blind bags. The crane mechanism doesn't work as smoothly as I'd like it to. For me, that doesn't take away too much from the set because I'm not raising and lowering it a lot, but maybe it does for you. So what do you think? If there's anything you think I've missed, please let me and everyone else know in the comments. Before a new review goes up, I'll make a YouTube community post showing which set I'll be reviewing next. So please keep a lookout for those as I'd love to hear and feature your feedback. Thanks for watching and take care.